Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. Unbelievable that the channel is more than three years old, Jimmy, and we haven't really put uh, much nexus underneath uh, the microscope. Shame on us, Ed. Shame on us. I, I do think that in the future we will uh, look at this comprehensively on the channel, but, you know, today is a day for a quicker video, so I thought we would take a look at Nexus the Origin uh, one-shot that came out from Dark Horse Comics, probably the first uh, Dark Horse uh, issue to hit uh, publication, um, a comic that went through numerous publishers from Capital Comics to First to uh to dark horse so uh w for a comic that hasn't been yeah that's six. represent all of these different publishers uh capital where it starts in the black and white magazine size then does some color before it goes to first does like 80 issue run at first comics yep. and then on to dark horse so uh quite a history whenever we get to finally like the nexus origin the official origin story um quite a ways to go an amazing, like, for 80s creator-owned indie, you know, direct market books, an amazing run. You know, writer-artists mostly together through that run. There are some other artists that would fill in here and there, but still together, you know, 80-plus issues later, uh, over a decade later. Kind of amazing, because uh, not easy to make indie comics ever. Yes. So, uh, the original Nexus was in black and white, three issues, I believe. Yes. And... Uh, a lot of what is in here shows up in a very crude, rude dude version uh, in the, the, the sort of earliest 1980s, man. Uh, we see his fetishization of that uh, Andrew Loomis uh, figure from the jump. We see the little elements of uh, your space ghost kind of energy with the character designs in, in Nexus in particular. Uh, but... Yeah, and the evolution of some of the spaceships. Yeah. Um, you know, you see some of those, those kind of Hanna-Barbera and, and uh, interesting animation designs. I mean, S Steve Rude really is sort of this savant of, totally. of drawing uh, superhero and cartoony art. And, you know, you see a shot here. This backdrop is actually a self-published Nexus. Uh, it had done several of these oversized newspaper-like Nexus uh, strips. So, yeah, it's a character that's been around at this point for going on 40 years. Uh, pretty amazing. Cartoonist Kayfabe exists because you, the viewer, have been goodly enough to support our comic book projects that Jimmy and I have created over the, the years. Jim has a new one coming out, March 16th. 316 says you got to go out and get a Hulk grand design. What Jim has done is taken uh, 40, 50 years worth of incredible Hulk comics, more than 500 issues of material, multiply that by 22, and you got the amount of pages that Jimmy had to read in order to distill it down into its purest form. Two 40-page comics, the first one being Hulk Monster, the following month Hulk Madness comes out, 40-page comics apiece, taking all of that material, distilling it down into its purest form, and giving you the greatest Hulk romp you are ever going to read. We've supplied Jimmy with a bunch of variant covers. Here's the Eddie P variant that is sort of by way of the Todd McFarlane Herb Trimpey joint. Peach Momoko, the cottage industry and friend of cartoonist Kayfabe herself has provided Jimmy a fantastic uh, Hulk grand design cover. Marcos Martin gives you that quintessential transformation sequence that we all like to see in Hulk Grand Design. Jimmy, how many uh, transformations happen in uh, these 40-page comics? <laughs> Man, so many. And how many in the 500 issues? <laughs> that is, that is, the whole comic could have been transformations. Probably at least 500, right? <laughs> you got to have those moments. Anything you want to say real quick, Jimmy? Perfect for new readers. Uh, First-time readers are welcome to this comic. Like, I pride myself on readability in my comics. So if you've never read a Hulk comic but you love the Hulk, this is the book to start with. And long-time readers sh should love this book because it is my favorite moments from the Hulk, whether those are covers, uh, story moments, characters, artists, whatever it is. Like, it's it's the Hulk. You know, I tried to pull the greatest parts of the Hulk from 500 issues worth of uh, sample. And... Um, Hopefully I've done it. So uh, good for first time or long time readers. You guys showed up in a big way in 2021 for uh, my Red Room comics. Uh, I expect you to do the same and more for Jimmy because this is a this is a known quantity, man. We know the Hulk. You want to see what Jimmy does with the Hulk. Uh, Red Room, the anti-social network, was the first season of Red Room comics that came out in 2021. Uh, we are hustling 
the uh, trade paperback of that series of comics. Uh, about 70 pages of addition, additional material in the trade paperback to go along with uh, supplement the issues worth of comics that you might have read before. You're getting the first draft of Red Room that was done in a very quick and dirty fashion. This is kind of like how I, how I uh, brain dump whenever I'm trying to come up with like my next round of comics. This was very successful in the X-Men Grand Design Omnibus, and I had to include this kind of thing. Uh, maybe every comic I make from now on will we'll have this, this kind of material included in the back. Director's commentary tracks, sketches, all kinds of stuff is in there. And uh, Trigger Warnings is the next round of Red Room Comics going to start coming out in March 9th, man. March is Cartoonist Kayfabe Month at the comic shop, so pre-order these comics. This is the standard cover for Red Room issue number one of Trigger Warnings due to some ransomware. Uh, this might be the lowest uh, issue one on record. For, uh, for the Red Room comics because the stores were not able to get all their orders in. I'd like to see it go into second printings uh, really, really quick. Within one week would be nice. Peach Momoko, the aforementioned cottage industry of comic book cover artwork, provided her piece for uh, Red Room. Jim Rugg, man, King Kayfaber, by way of Robert Crumb's Zack Comics number zero in true form. That is sick as fuck. And this is the Eddie P. Retail Incentive variant kind of playing around with standard book cover uh, aesthetic. Get these comics at your local comic shop. Support our bibliographies and we're going to be able to continue bringing cartoonist kayfabe to you now that we're done paying the bills. Back to the video. Big fan of the comic. I, I have the like 40 issues of the of the first comics. Yeah. And uh, the tandem between Baron and Rude is something that uh, you couldn't have one without the other back, back in the day. But uh, upon reading this comic here it feels like there's some real push-pull with the storytelling sensibilities of Mike Barron and what he wants to get on the page and the, and the strengths of Steve, Steve Rude, you know? Because, like, Barron has very specific, like, this, like, political stuff. It's kind of... It feels kind of silly to even think of Nexus as this, like, uh, always-optioned property that is... Um, potentially going to be an animated series on TV or something, because I, th I, you read this stuff, and I think what Hollywood is responding to whenever they get in touch is this right here. The image of Nexus is a very cool costume. When you get into it, there's really not an elevator pitch. He is an executioner, which it, makes it hard to sell as a cartoon aimed at kids, even though a lot of the visual motifs are based on cartoons aimed at kids. But, like, he goes around and kills mass murderers. Yeah. So that, that's, your, that's your elevator pitch, uh, Hanna-Barbera. <laughs> <laughs> and we're getting into, like, you know, these beer hall, you know, soapbox cultists political ideologies there are like they refer to them as, as sovs right like soviet th this is soviet occupation like making yeah. it super weird again rereading this and, and kind of looking at those details it's like wait so the soviets had like you know colonized some of these various planets in, in outer space and so you have the native people who are pushing against that occupation but it's the soviets i mean it's it's science fiction so it's some ersatz stand-in and then you heard of your ersatz stand-ins for nazis and stuff like that with like a swastika but it's not a swastika it's like almost a swastika it's 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 very ham-fisted you know political discourse with a character that looks like this right you know what i'm saying i was surprised to see some of those actual names i mean uh is it I, I think there might be Stalin statues in this occupied world. You know, like it, it really is like Cold War, put the Cold War in outer space. Yeah, yeah. In the future. Kind of odd. And you have this sleek, uh, precise Steve Rude artwork to go with it. The art's it, beautiful. There's Man, this can like draw. push pull in terms of narrative and art that is just, it's, 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 it's jolting. Yeah, and what we're seeing is, uh, Nexus's father and mother is, is who we're seeing here. So it really is origin. Like, we're going back to preconception. That's the, other, origin. that's the other thing, too. Like, as an introduction to new readers, is this the approach? 
You know, you don't have a bunch of cool shots of Nexus doing stuff. Like, it's the straight up origin. 50, 40 pages of uh, stuff before Nexus is even born. Check out the page layouts, though. That's one of the things I always think about Steve Rude. And we did look at his sketchbook and, like, the layouts and how he does all these page layouts. But you see him, like, being very inventive with his approach to the page. Doesn't always work. Sometimes it makes it hard to read. His storytelling is, is not not great. But it does make for, like, unique-looking pages. It does. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of parts in these comics where it's like, what? Where, where am I going? You're establishing a character this big. And then when you kill him this big... We're supposed to just know that that's the same character. Uh, he's a drawer. Look, even the Soviet symbols. I mean, this they're not stand-ins. <laughs> you know, like, this is Soviet occupation in outer space. This is like Golden Age comics where you would have, like, the buffoon Hitler and the buffoon Stalin. And then you got your right. standard-ass, you know, father of uh, Nexus. What's his name? Like, Hellpop or something? Yeah. Nexus is Horatio Hellpop. I'm not sure what his dad's name is, but something Hellpop. Got these little religious zealots in the mix. Fucking one of these gimmicks on every page. Yeah. Weird religious orders. Yeah, and what his his father's a general on this planet, falls in love with the with a local girl, and of course there's insurrection of the local people that he's trying to, to manage. I hear tell that uh Romeo and Juliet and Shakespeare was a big part of the uh, inception of this comic, Jim. <laughs> and then it's stuff like this, man, that that uh, that, Rude, that Rude excels at. He's so good with all of these, like any kind of stuff that he's designing, like, you know, even doors opening is really cool looking uh, science fiction visuals. You can see why this, this comic would have the following it has, you know, because it has these sci-fi elements and you drop that into the middle of the direct market where there were no other books that looked like this. Right. Just perfect. You know, it's a perfect formula for the direct market. And just flexing the Andrew Loomis stuff. Like, you would see, like, one of these in those figure drawing books along with all that other material. And just these the posing of the figures, all that kind of stuff. People were clamoring to have Steve Rude do mainstream comics. Like, you remember those days, dude, when, you know, a Marvel DC fan would see this dismiss it only because the spandex isn't in the arrangement right. of Captain America yeah. or something put, like put that. a number four on his chest and maybe I'll be interested. <laughs> but then you have the smarter marks who look past the leotard and are like, imagine if this dude did, you know, insert name. Guy who in introduces me to Steve Rude's art is Ernie Steiner when I'm like 16, one of the first professional pencilers I ever met. And he's showing me different stuff and talking about different artists, and it's like, this guy. He's yeah. showing me Steve Rude's sketchbook and layouts and figure work uh, for that reason. So he certainly had his fans in the uh, in the mainstream ranks. Our boy Horatio, he has nightmares. Yes, and they're on some, you know, like they go on the run after the, the I think he blows up the planet. I think his dad blows up the planet, pretty much. And they go on the run, and uh, wherever they're living, there's this tank. And so Horatio is having some kind of pains, and, and it's almost like the tank is calling, put him in the tank, which is where he gets the visions of who he needs to kill. Yeah. It's the thing. It's like such a... This isn't the page to say this, but the, the style feels more cheery than what the comic is. It doesn't have that, like, that mood lighting. You know, it's, and it's always poppy colors. Mm -hmm. Like in... in um, the first comics, it's bright, super, you know, Baxter paper color. When you see these moments here, you know, it's like, ah. It's some of the best looking superhero comic art there is. Is true? <laughs> Applied to an executioner of mass murders. His mother, by the way, wanders off into this tunnel and starves to death. They find her weeks later dead. He's not happy. And uh, his imaginary friends could have saved her and don't. It's dark stuff. Yeah. yeah Tor so tormented, uh, tormented star. You always got these, just every figure is posed out. Mm -hmm. If he's drawing a guy, all the anatomy is going to be sound. This is a panel that appeared in the very first Nexus, more or less, you know, it's redrawn here, but it's, it's the same idea of his power sparing the innocent, but not, you're not able to shield the, the guilty. 
and people give him a hard time and say, you know, who makes you judge, jury, and executioner? And he's like, I'm just the executioner. <laughs> you know, like those nightmares that, that plague him, he suffers physical pain from. Like the only way to alleviate the pain is to answer the tank's uh, calling. Using uh, different materials, you know, a couple of pages worth of duotone panels and things, man, calls back to uh, the Loomis, calls back to EC Comics. It's rich with comics language. It is. And it's wild to see some of these, pan you know, like a lot of these pages that are just loaded up with like 10 panels and it still kind of works and you still get to see his art shining through. Yeah, really tight. He has a bunch of refugees. So this is, you know, this is our nexus kind of in the present. And he lives in a remote star system and a lot of refugees from the planets that he goes and, and kills the, the uh, dictators or whatever, they end up living then with him. So that's why you get to see, again, like Steve Rude flexing his alien designs and things. Um, really good for, for that sci-fi visual. He also looks real basic, you know, just like a real average Joe kind of fella, man. Not, nothing nothing uh, exciting about him. You know who reminds me of him a lot is Mike Allred. Allred, absolutely. On this page, like you look at a page like this and it's like that, you know, that, that must have been an influence on a young uh, Mike, Mike Allred. Something for up. us to, to look at in the future is there's a crossover with uh, Mad Men and, and Nexus that's really good, you know, and you, and you kind of get to see these guys looking at each other's characters. And, and I think there is a real acknowledgement between the two because both very colorful and, and very figure based. Very pop arty. I think here it's like we establish this figure here and then he meets his come up and it's like somewhere like maybe here or the next page gets the pie to the face and it's like this is your establishing shot of our guy that's what I'm talking about like he's Rude's a drawer storyteller comes second yeah now we're getting origins of supporting characters yeah uh, roommates if you will <laughs> <laughs> so odd alien romance Jimmy I wonder if anybody's written about this in terms of kind of like Cold War and post-World War II themes running through it. Because it is bizarre. It's not something I think about when I think of Nexus, but you read this origin and it's impossible to ignore. Right. You know, like we have this guy, his factory being um, occupied and then made to make weapons or whatever it is. Like... We read the same thing in Mouse. Yeah, I mean, it's all it's all the stuff we had to... At first, we had to wear a number... And then, you know, they used us to put us in camps. Like, I mean, you see the swastika thing. Like, this is that thing that, like, personally, as, as a creative person, I wouldn't step one inch in this direction, man. Because you're playing with some heavy material, and then you're putting, like, these faces right. on top of this stuff. Like, what is that? You know, like, <laughs> like you probably have certain intentions, but it could be like that Jerry Lewis day the laughter died kind of thing where it's like unintentionally like just crazy. And you mentioned it's been optioned a lot over the years for an animated piece. Like you're walking into your animation meeting and being like, here's the blue, here's the uh, origins. Yeah. Yeah. This right here, because it doesn't like, let's say spawn is the template for like adult animation and max. So then you're like, yeah, let's have more of that. This is too poppy looking. For the subject, that's what I was talking about, the push-pull yeah. of Nexus, man. Because it's you have this pop sensibility with the artwork, and then uh, Mike Barron doing his thing, and it's just like, these guys found each other, and it's like, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. On Rude's case, you know, Mike Barron, you find a talent like this, you hold on to him forever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> you do not let that, him out of your grip. <laughs> you hold on to that dude forever, man. And if the dude's a graphomaniac, which there's a lot of evidence suggesting that Steve Rude is, the dude has crazy sketchbooks, man, and just, like, is putting pen to paper constantly, will the dude just draw whatever you put in front of him? You know, he'll draw the, he'll draw your comic? You know Dave Gibbons, I think his first written comic is illustrated by Steve Rude. Is that it's the world's finest, and it's amazing. Um, yeah, a guy can draw anything and, and draw it great. I'll say this, for all the criticisms it sounds like we have on Nexus, I love Nexus. I do too, yeah. And it's the weirdness that really, you know, like, these are things I would never quite put in my comics, but at the same time, I don't know what you get if you remove them. Right. You know, like, it's part of the, the oddness and the uniqueness of Nexus. You know, it's part of that formula. I don't know how you sell that to a, to a cartoon, you know, an all-ages cartoon, but as a comic, like, there's nothing else like it. Comics is better for it. Yes. Stay in the lane. And again, remarkable that this thing has had the run it's had. Like, like being published on and off for, for 40 years, like, 
at a level uh, this high, this is unbelievable. I mean, this is better looking than whatever Marvel was publishing this year. This is far better looking. And uh, you don't see that often with indie comics. That's true. The afterward gives us the origin, 1980, whenever uh, Mike Barron and uh, Steve Rude hook up and connect. They did a comic before then, which I'm real curious if that thing was ever published in a way that uh, that we could get access to. It's called Encyclopedias, I think. Yes. Talk about a weird idea for a comic. Bad title. Bad title, man. Uh, and then the publishers of Capital were just like, we, we're in the superhero biz, man. Come up with something like that. Uh, from the sounds of it, uh, Baron is taking a look at the Steve Rude sketchbooks, getting a sense of what the guy likes to draw. I'll give you some stuff to draw with this kind of imagery, man. We say that a lot, right? With with like, if you're if you're it's a comics writer, like, write to the strength of your artist. It's the only way. It's the only way, man, to have a good collaboration. But this is the better like origin. It really is than, than the, the whole comic. It's cool to hear, like, uh, Baron talks a little bit about spending hours, like, five, six hours a day working on his own art to try to get, you know, to make, wants to make comics real bad. And I think that's what you get with Steve Rude, too, wants to make comics real bad and, and finding each other. But it's cool to see, like, this guy who becomes a writer, but, man, worked hard to, like, try to be able to do the drawing part. Yeah. And we've seen um, in, the, in the Steve Rude sketchbook where he talks about laying out a page or an issue of Nexus – Baron providing layouts, yes. you know, like like first drafts, rough drafts, and I always like when when writers want advice, like that's one of the things I always tell them is like tr- do some of the drawing, like you figure out the page a little bit, you know, even if it's not something the artist is going to do, it gives you a sense of size and space and breakdowns and what you could possibly fit into a freaking comic panel because those those writers got to figure that part and, out. And I didn't invent this idea, you know. Alan Moore does it, Neil Gaiman does it, like you know, there's a reason to kind of like break it down that way, and and, and I think Mike Barron's another part of that school. So I thought it was interesting to take a look at this origin comic because it's like, you know, it's the origin. Like, we're reintroducing this comic to a new generation. And I was kind of baffled and shocked at, it's bizarre. at the choices they made to tell this origin story. Yeah, and I'll tell you another piece. After this, they do a series, a mini series at Dark Horse. I prefer any of them to this origin. Like, yeah. they're really good. They're, they're the sci-fi adventure stories with Nexus. Um, so, you know, if you want to dive into Nexus, I would recommend any of the Dark Horse miniseries or, or, you know, standalone stories or whatever after Origin. Honestly, they're just better stories, yeah. I think. It's, this is the weirdest kind of issue one you might ever read in superhero comics. It is, but the production is beautiful. And the drawing... Off the charts, man. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, what is out there? Hulk Grand Design Monster coming to your local comic shop March 16th. Tell your local comic shop to pre order that. Tell them to put it in your reserve, put it in your sub box, let them know that it's coming and that you want a copy. Uh, you can join me on patreon.com slash Jim Rug where you can see the making of the Hulk. I am working on the, uh, the the Hulk process zine, if you will, so sharing a lot of original art and sketches and behind the scenes stuff for Hulk Grand Design. Red Room, the anti-social network, is in stores now. That collects the 2021 season of Red Room Comics, uh, but it is the year 2022. New season of Red Room Comics is forthcoming March 9th. The first issue of Red Room Trigger Warnings. Gonna hit the stands. Murder on the Dark Web for Fun and Profit is the name of the game in Red Room Comics. And, uh, Jimmy, things are getting scary with the art style, man. The whole idea was to push the extremes because that's how i think uh that kind of thing would work you got to keep uh incentivizing the audience to see what's what's new and uh latest greatest and with these comics stretching the art chops and learning a lot about anatomy jimmy uh you can read these comics ahead of time on patreon patreon.com slash head uh three bucks get you the archive there and i have more than uh, 200 pages worth of strips up there jimmy and i have a link tree I have linked trees in the description below this video. Uh, This channel is subsidized by the comics that that we sell. So thank you very much for supporting uh, the channel uh, that way by supporting our comics. What else do we have, Jimmy? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts and merchandise at the links below the video. And thanks to everybody who's been grabbing those shirts and hats and mugs and tote bags with the Cartoonist Kayfabe uh, message printed upon them that also is a way to uh, keep this channel running jimmy given those motion orders we're going to be on our way read more comics